like many of you, I'm sure, I recently upgraded my Parallels 5 desktop for the Mac to version 6. And I thought what I'd do is another video. The one on installing Windows 7 on Parallels has proven to be very popular and generated a lot of questions. So I thought I'd go ahead and do another one. And this time I would look at doing a Linux install. And so what I've got here, I've basically I've downloaded and installed Parallels Desktop 6 for the Mac. And you can find that at parallels.com. And then if you hop over to ubuntu.com and you can go here and you can click on the download button. And if you go through, um, I actually have both of these. I have the 64 and the 32 bit, but you can just select the 32 bit for desktop, hit the start download. And then as you can see here, it's going to be approximately a 686 megabyte download. So download the ISO file. And then once you've got that file, we'll resume with the install. Okay, so we've downloaded the 32-bit ISO file and put it on the desktop there, as you can see. And I have Parallels open here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit New, and I'm going to say Install From, and I'm going to use an ISO file for this. And I'm going to use that one that I have on the desktop there. You just get the file dialog box, and you, you just point it to the ISO file that you downloaded. And I'm going to hit Continue. And now I'm going to use the Express installation. I think it does fine for, for most situations. And you're just going to set up the user account details here within the operating system. So I'm going to put in, I got a name there, and I'm going to put in a username. And in fact, I'm just going to change the username to Peter. And I'm going to put in a simple password just for logging into the account. I'm going to hit continue. It's going to give me a warning that says it's a weak password. That's okay, that's fine. Um, you know, I'm just using a simple password for the sake of the video here, but let's let's make it a little more tricky. So I'll make it a little bit longer. And hit continue. It's going to ask me for a name, and that name is just the name that's going to appear on this file list here, as you can see on these other ones. So I'm going to use Ubuntu Linux 32-bit there, and I'm just going to put a location. I'm not going to worry about sharing it with other users on the Mac. Um, the default location will be to put it in your documents folder under parallels. And I'm not going to customize the settings before installation. I'm just going to use the defaults and then we'll go back and look at those some other time. Hit create. And what it's going to do now, it's going to create that new virtual machine and put a little link on the desktop for me. And as you can see, if I move the window here, it's now starting up the virtual machine. Let's just move that across there. And what we're going to do now is we'll be going into the Ubuntu installer. So from this point forward, it's as if I was installing it on a PC. The fact that it's in a, in a virtual machine is irrelevant to the installer. And we'll just go ahead and let it do its thing. So if you've installed Ubuntu before, this should be pretty familiar to you and be no surprise. So it's going to do go through and it's going to do all the usual verifying the installation files, setting up the clock and all those sorts of things. We'll just go ahead and let it do its thing here. It's now going to create the partitions for the Linux operating system. Or again, all within that, that virtualization file. So you know if you ever need to move or copy or delete this, it's just that one virtualization file on your hard drive, which I think is nice. It also makes it very easy for backing up as well. Okay, it's going through, it's configuring the hardware. For the most part, you you know, you just really let the installer go through and do its thing, and then eventually it'll reboot the machine, and then that's where we'll pick up the next stage. So now it's finished copying the files across, and it's just going to go through and do a reboot here for us. I'll just move the screen so we can see it. I have quite a large desktop setting here, so I have to move the window around for you to see it. Okay, so there we go. The The install is finished, and I'm just going to click here now to, to log in. I'll just put the password in there, hit return. So you can see that what Parallels has done is added a shortcut on the desktop here for us to the shared folders so that you can share the folders and files. We're going to get one more reboot here. What is happening here is just the final settings taking effect.
So the install is now completed for us and you can see that what's going to happen here is it's going to go through and Ubuntu is going to immediately say, you know, most likely there's going to be a lot of updates for you to install. And what has happened is Parallels has installed its applications and its drivers for us already. So those are already there and waiting for us. And I'm just going to go ahead now and install the updates for the operating system here. Let's put my password in again. What I'm going to do here now, I'm going to show you a couple of the changes that I make in the configuration settings for the Parallels virtual machine. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this down here. I'm just going to shut down Ubuntu. To make these changes, you actually have to turn the virtual machine off first. So that's finished and I'm just going to go ahead and close that there. So what you can do is several ways to get at this, but perhaps the quickest way is just to go up to the list here and you can go in and I'm just going to right click or control click here on the machine and choose configure and it's going to bring up the options here and you know you can change the name um, and lots of other settings but I'm going to show you the ones that I change I leave it set to one CPU but my machine has 12 gigs of RAM so what I like to do is just to get some nice performance gain here and I bump this up in this case I'm going to set it up to four megabytes there and I'm going to go through sorry four gigabytes and I'm gonna there's a bit of a typo there I think on the settings window I'm going to set this to 4 gigabytes. I'm going to go over to the options here now and let's just take a look at a couple of these. I like to have them set set to the default of never for start automatically. Startup view, um, I actually normally like to run mine in full screen mode. I've been running in window mode here for the convenience of showing you on the video but I'm going to go ahead and change this to full screen here. Uh, when you shut down the VM, it normally it leaves the window open so you can just click the window to start it up again. I don't actually like to do that. I find that kind of annoying. So what I do is I change this one to say close window. So when I shut down the VM, it's automatically going to close that window and bring you back to this, this list of the VMs here. And I'm going to leave the rest of those the same. You know, there's lots of other options you can do, but those are really the only ones that I do change. Um, better performance. I like to have it set for better performance. I'm on an iMac here, so longer battery life is meaningless for me. Um, let's just go through and look at a couple of the others here in case there's some of the new stuff in 6 that I want to change. You can choose to isolate the Mac from Linux here, so you don't have the shared folders or the interaction between the two systems. Um, that can be good. I do that with my Windows machine, my Windows virtual machine, just as a, a security precaution. And also because a lot of the time I'll use these virtual machines as my test benches or development machines and you know something screwy could go wrong and this just guarantees that it'll screw up the, well it doesn't guarantee but it means the virtual machine is more likely to just screw itself up than to screw up my host operating system as well. You can tell Time Machine to not back up your virtual machines. These virtual machine files can get quite big and I manually back mine up However, I do allow Time Machine to go ahead and do it because, you know, frankly, my philosophy is you can never have too many backups. So I just leave that set like that. Like I say, you can set to share some of your Mac folders with your virtual machines here, the home folder or disks or none. Um, I just leave that. For this one, I'm just going to leave it as it is. But for the most part, I'm just going to leave the rest of these as they are. And I'm just going to go OK. So I've just basically bumped up the memory there and told that window to close. So now when I want to restart the machine, all I got to do is hit the little power icon here and I do like their new graphics that they have. That is essentially how you set up a basic Ubuntu system in Parallel 6 for the Mac desktop and you know a couple of tweaks there for the extra memory and that sort of thing, but that's going to get you up and running and from there, you know, the Windows one, it's the same thing, you just go through do the install. So I hope it's been useful. Uh, if you're interested in new videos, follow us at UIBuzz on Twitter or UIBuzz.com to go to the website and see the other videos, leave comments, um, suggestions if you want to see some new videos and that kind of thing. And thank you.